ANJ Capital, like and subscribe. Today we're talking about CapM and Alpha. So to paint we go. CapM is Capital Asset Pricing Model. It's used to find the expected return of an investment based on risk. This is the formula. Expected return equals risk-free rate plus beta times the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate. So this market premium, the expected return of the market minus the risk-free rate is like the minimum that investors are expecting to invest in stocks. Because stocks are more risky than government bonds, you want to get paid more. Let's say you have two opportunities and the payout is both 5%. Would you rather take on more or less risk if the payout's the same? If the payout's the same, you want the least amount of risk possible. The only problem with government bonds is, I would guess, opportunity cost. If you put your money in bonds, you can't put it elsewhere, meaning you have to sit back and watch while Tesla goes to the, the stars, and you can't do anything. You have to just enjoy your 2%. We use government bonds, treasury bills, seen as the risk-free rate because they're backed by the government. So it has the lowest chance of defaulting. If the government doesn't pay you back, you have bigger problems on your hand. B, beta of the stock. Beta, we talked about in the last video, is the volatility. The stock's volatility compared to the market. If you know a stock has a beta of two, it tends to move two times the distance that SPY would. SPY went up 10%, the stock was up 20%. Expected return of the market. Use the annual return of the S&P as our benchmark. Grand America, we tend to use S&P 500 always as the benchmark. You know, that's usually the goal. That's that's the best way to determine whether or not your investment, your portfolio has been a good portfolio because if it hasn't even beat the S&P 500, then you could have just bought index funds and saved yourself the time. Let's do Amazon. So what do we need to know? The risk-free rate beta of Amazon, what the market tends to make over the year. Amazon beta, beta. 1.62. 1.62 is the beta. You need to know the risk-free rate first. Treasury.gov. One month is 1.56. But you have to multiply it by the expected return of the market. According to historical records, the average annual return since inception in 1926 to 2018 is approximately 10 percent. 10. Minus the risk-free rate, which was 1.56. Should be like what? 8.44. We'll, we'll use the calculator. No equals over here. 844, okay. Multiply by 1.62. I know this is messy, but you add the 1.56. So this here, based on this risk-free rate, based on this beta that it's showing, based on the annual return of the market, if the market goes up 10%, Amazon tends to go up 15.23% in a year's time. At the end of the video, we always tell you the negatives. You can't assume that any formula will give you the perfect scenario. Just because CapM wants to give you the expected return doesn't mean it always is that way. There's no formula out there that will tell you 100% this is the way to do it. We show you this because I read it in finance books. You might see it in the future. But betas change. Annual returns change. People buy and sell for own reasons. People buy. Everybody's imperfect. The markets aren't rational. People aren't rational sometimes. Don't assume that this is, you know, the golden ticket. So next we're going to talk about alpha. So alpha is the active return of an investment portfolio compared to a benchmark. An alpha greater than 1% means your portfolio had a 1% greater return than the S&P did. A negative alpha means the investment or portfolio underperformed the market. It's not that simple. But where you just say, okay, I, I got a 13, the market did 10, I beat my alpha was 3. Wait a minute. Hold on. How much risk did you put on to get that return? If you took on a crazy amount of risk, your 13%, your 3% better than the market may not be as good as you thought. That's where Jensen's alpha comes in. It's risk adjusted now. Portfolio return minus risk-free rate minus beta times expected market return minus risk-free rate. Let's use the same numbers with Amazon. If your beta is really high in your portfolio and you just beat the market by a little bit, you may not be doing as good as you thought. You might have took on more risk than you needed because that could have easily went against you. So we have to adjust for the risk. Portfolio return. Let's say you had a portfolio return of 16, 16%. 1.56 minus beta. This isn't just one individual stock. This would be your portfolio that you want to beat the market. So you got portfolio return 16 minus 
risk-free rate was 156, equals 844, 44, and then you multiply that by minus 1366. An alpha of 0.77. Active return if portfolio gains 16%, while S&P gained 10 would be 6% greater. But when you adjust for risk, you have a positive alpha of 0.77, which is still good. You want to make sure that you take on less risk. That's the video. If you've got any questions, throw a comment on. I'm out of here.